Good evening. It is September 14th, 2023, and I would like to welcome you and to call to order the meeting of the South Brunswick Township Board of Education. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing as I will ask for a moment of silence in memory of the 22nd anniversary of September 11th. I pledge allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silence in memory of the 22nd anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Thank you. Also, the Board of Education here in South Brunswick would like to extend our heartfelt thoughts for those families who were impacted or have family members impacted by the two most recent tragedies in Morocco and Libya. Such devastation by the earthquake in Morocco and the floods in Libya that killed more than 6,000 and left 10,000 missing. It's terrible devastation to both of these countries. Our hearts and thoughts are with you and your families. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the board secretary has caused notice of this meeting 48 hours prior, including date, time, and location, to be posted in the South Brunswick Public Library, the board office, filed with the South Brunswick Township Clerk, and communicated to the Home News, Home News Tribune, excuse me, and the Star Ledger. It is also posted on the district website. Before we get started, I would also like to welcome Dee Fan Lee. Yay! <laughs> Tonight is DFAN's official start. She is a junior at our high school, and throughout her academic journey, she has fostered a deep passion for the arts and a genuine love for working with others. Outside of school, she dedicates herself to various volunteer roles to make a positive impact in the lives of others. As the Board of Education Student Representative for the Student Council, she will bring a student's perspective to the decision-making process. Again, please join me in welcoming Dee Fan in her new role. Thank you. Mr. Pawlowski, can we please have a roll call? Ms. Julie Ferrara? Present. Ms. Laura Hernandez? Here. Mrs. Deepa Karthik? Here. Ms. Alicia Khan? Here. Mr. Raja Krishna? Here. Mr. Mike Mitchell? Present. Mr. Barry Nathanson. Dr. Smitha Raj. Here. Mrs. Lisa Rogers. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Unfortunately, Mr. Nathanson is ill this meeting, so we wish him a speedy recovery. Moving on to approval of the meeting agenda. May I have a motion and second to approve tonight's meeting? Motion. Dr. Raj, motion. Ms. Laura Hernandez, second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Next order of business is minutes. The, we have two to approve. Sorry. <laughs> we have two to approve, both business min board minutes and executive minutes of July 27th, 2023. Mr. Polowski, the board secretary, drafts, sent the draft of the minutes for both meetings to the board on Monday, September 11th. Are there any corrections to the minutes as distributed? No. Very good, then our minutes stand and are approved. Next is um, the report of the student representative, Defan Lee. Good evening, everyone. Activities is excited to be starting the year with so many opportunities. Next week on the 19th and 20th, we will be hosting our annual club fair. These are lunchtime activities for our students to find out about all things club related. The clubs are excited to be participating in this event again. 
Pay to participate for our non-selective clubs will officially open October 1st. We encourage students to attend two meetings to make sure their schedules match and they like the club before registering. Some other exciting news include the upcoming Spirit Week on September 26th through September 29th. Our days are Tuesday, Airport Fit Day, Wednesday, Class Color Day, Thursday, Tacky Taurus Day, and Friday, Class Flags Day and Homecoming. Save the date for our homecoming football game on Friday, September 29th. Our Think Pink Day is Friday, October 13th. Moving on to athletics, the SBHS gymnastics team is off to a great start and had their first meet on Wednesday, September 13th. They are currently fundraising for the Jackie Pang Fund, a former SB teacher and SBHS gymnastics parent alumni. The girls' tennis team is currently 2-0 with wins over Old Bridge and Edison Magnet School. The girls will take on East Brunswick and North Brunswick this week, looking to stay undefeated. The girls' volleyball season has kicked off with tremendous energy and enthusiasm. We invite you to join us in showing your support for the Vikings as they prepare to face the Patriots of Colonia High School on Tuesday. This season, the girls' volleyball program is proudly participating in the Making Strides Breast Cancer Fundraiser. If you're eager to contribute and demonstrate your support for this meaningful cause, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Coach Casey Kelly. Our upcoming home events include Gymnastics versus St. Thomas Aquinas on September 15th, Girls Tennis versus Edison and Girls Volleyball versus Colonia on September 19th, Field Hockey versus North Plainfield on September 20th, Girls Soccer versus Edison and Girls Volleyball versus Monroe on September 21st, Gymnastics versus South Plainfield on September 22nd, and Field Hockey versus South Plainfield on September 23rd. We will now be accepting sports forms for the winter season tryouts. The deadline to submit winter, for, uh, winter sports forms is Friday, October 20th, 2023. Please refer to the athletic handbook for more information. For high school forms, place the completed packet in the black drop box outside the gym entrance of the high school. For middle school forms, please place the completed packet in the black drop box outside the main entrance of the school your child attends. Thank you so much. Congratulations again, Dufan, and welcome aboard. Okay, the next order of business is the report of the Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Fetter. All right, thank you. Welcome, everybody, <clears throat> to the board. Welcome, DFAN. Congratulations on your uh, first this year's speech. Thank you. And uh, feel free when you come here to talk to us about school issues, mm -hmm. things if you're talking with the student council, or it doesn't, it, you, you can really get into it with us, okay? We'd love to hear the student voice, okay? okay thank you. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, it's our first meeting since we had school start, and I'm going to just share a couple little stories. Uh, my first story is, um, I, opened the, I opened the year at Constable this year, and uh, I went over to Constable because they have three preschools over there. So, you know, the, the attitude of preschool staff, preschool parents, and kids is worth everything. Like we all should just live in a preschool room. <laughs> Your whole day is better in a preschool room. I'm telling you. It is the place to be. So the funny part at Constable was, Constable you know, was a K-5 school, right? Now they're a pre-K-5 school. So the funny part is kind of kindergarten, now just go deal with their stuff. <laughs> it used to be that all the attention was on kindergarten. Now it's like, nah, just you're fine. Go deal with your thing. Teachers, you're fine. Just go deal with your kids. And the preschool was, was the dominant factor. So that was a lot of fun. Then I went on Friday. Well, Friday was quite an eventful day for many reasons. But on Friday, I started at Dean's School. Now, remember, Dayton and Dean's are now preschools. All that's there are little tiny people. That's it. <laughs> They're all like this big. They're cute as a button. Now, in that school... <clears throat> oh, I've got to think of a good word because chaos is not the right word. I will not say that. The preschool people will be very mad at me. <laughs> How about organized, structured chaos? We'll go with that. <laughs> so on the first few days of school, parents are still figuring out, how does this work? Wait a minute. Where do I go? So all the cars in the back of Dean's, there's no space at Dean's, by the way. There's absolutely no space, none. So the cars are like stacked, right, like this and this and this. And there's the police are there. Jeff Landers was there, one of our SROs. Um, like about 38,000 adults were outside. 
trying to help. And then what you witness at preschool is the adults trying to manage getting kids out of a car while parents are trying to manage getting their kid out of a car, finding where the book bag was, hoping the kid's still in their car seat, getting the kid out of the car seat, and then the kid starts doing what? Crying. Lots of crying. <laughs> and with crying with preschool, it's not just crying. Crying comes with the, ha the hug. <laughs> it comes with latching on to another human's body as tight as you could be. So now you have the staff trying to get the kids off of the parent, the parent trying to get back in the car, and everybody's attitude was absolutely the reason it worked. The parents were incredible. The staff was laughing and smiling yeah. on the surface. I don't know what they were doing under the surface. <laughs> but they kept the attitude. And then I went into the gym. That, that, that was quite fun. And on the floor of the gym was a student. He decided it was time to lay down. <laughs> that happens, it's just time to lay down. So he laid down, and you know, when my kids, my kids are older now, but when my kids would lay down, and they, want, they would do it on purpose, so I would say, uppy. Uppy, that was the word I used, uppy. So I thought, I thought every kid used the word uppy. So I went over to this kid, uppy? Oh, no. Yeah, hands go up. <laughs> Pick the kid up, and immediately had him, and then his head, <laughs> right on my shoulder. I wanted to just leave with the kid <laughs> and go, but I'm not allowed to leave with kids. No, no leaving with children. So then one of the staff, who actually knew what they were doing, not like me, they are probably like, Mr. Fetter, you need to leave. Please, go. They took the kid from me, and that kid, I'm assuming, went to school that day and probably was fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to say, the attitude of the staff, that was at Constable, that was at, at the preschool, <clears throat> every building. You know, it's, um, I'm, a, I'm a Jet fan. You all know I'm a Jet fan. So with that comes torment and torture. <laughs> and, you know, when you think about your summer ending and you're a teacher, you, you, you know this, Laura. It's like, it's a bittersweet feeling. The summer's over, but you're, you still have that kind of excitement. Well, the excitement I'm seeing from staff is, is through the roof. Um, preschool people are exceptional. I don't, know, I don't know what their deal is. They, they, I don't know how they do what they do. But everybody, like, you're, you're talking about a group of people that leave their families to come take care of South Brunswick families, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I don't know, I, I, I can only say enough about um, our families that were outside. And then what did we all know about Friday? Friday was really interesting. So Friday at 3.33 in the afternoon, it was looking bad at 3.33. At 3.34, there was some drizzle. Mm -hmm. At 3.35, the world <laughs> opened and a monsoon fell from the sky at the exact time of dismissal. Mm -hmm. So I'm, out, I'm at Cambridge. I should have stayed in my office. I'm at Cambridge. I'm getting soaking wet. The teachers are soaking wet. The parents are soaking wet. In about three minutes, the kids are going to be soaking wet. Your choice at that time is, well, do we just stay in? I don't know how long we'd be there. We would have been there for a while because that, that didn't stop for any time soon. So I'm outside. We're getting wet. We're trying to shuffle the kids out, and we're trying to have the parents sign out. So the paper they signed on was completely soaked. Uh, it was just, it was, everyone still smiles. We all should have been crying. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. And that's what makes it work. Um, so I'm outside. It's now about 3.40, 3.45-ish. And my phone rings. I don't know how I heard it, because like, all you saw was ring. I don't know how I heard it, but I heard it. And it's this guy right here, Dave. He's hey, not smiling. Hey, Dave. He's smiling. He goes, hey, Scott. Um, Scott, board office was just hit by lightning. I'm like, huh, funny. No, no, <laughs> board office was hit by lightning. <laughs> yeah, we got hit by lightning. And um, inside, there was a tiny bit of interesting damage, a piece of cement Part in the of middle the of the building, like flew up, it was weird. Uh, no one got hurt, building's fine. Um, and you're like, well, what, what do we do? Do we bring the kids back in? What do we do? Because parents want to get out of there. Nobody want. It, it was crazy. And, and, you know, I don't know if we could have done better. I don't know what you do. Do you stop? Do you wait? Because I'll tell you, at 334, it was fine. A little bit of drizzle. We dismissal and we dismiss and drizzle. 335, uh, that sky opened. And if you were outside or you know what I'm talking about, that sky opened. And rain is supposed to fall down. <laughs> this rain was going this way. And I think it was just going like this, actually. I think it was thought it was a tornado of rain because it didn't feel like it was going anywhere but on top of humans. 
It was crazy. But that was our first two days of school. And here's the good news. People came back on Monday. <laughs> I, I, I was really pleased. I didn't know if we were going to have anybody else on Monday, but we did. And uh, all credit to our family, our staff, and, and these kids. I mean, they're so resilient. They handle anything. So, so kudos to them and kudos to our staff and our families. Solid opening. Solid opening. Never perfect, but solid. Uh, let, let's hope next year we the rain just wait a little bit longer than the second day than a monsoon. But, um, you know, having those preschoolers now is, is, is so much fun. And just so you all know, we have 280 preschoolers and 280 families paying $0 for preschool. And um, for those of you that have recently paid for daycare or preschool, you know the families I'm talking to are talking about saving over $10,000 per kid right now on this. I'm seeing some heads in the, in the $10,000. And that, that is the work of this board. Congratulations that you were able to accomplish that. And, you know, we'll be coming back to you with plans to continue to grow the best we can because that's something we can offer this community that makes the value of the community go up. It makes the opportunities for our students go up and that eventually has just massive positive outcomes for our, our whole community. So kudos on that. Um, with that, um, something we do uh, every year at this time is we do um, a National Suicide Prevention Awareness Week. This is a national, and um, this is that week of September 10th through 16th. Uh, we do a lot in the schools. Um, there's district lead response team. They've been sharing resources with staff at the high school. The bridge program and student assistance counselors are working on developing collaborative programs. Uh, we have signs of suicide program are also starting to be delivered in adolescent issues classes this month. So again. Hugely important, we know, especially since COVID, the, the challenges our adolescents face. So we do a really a lot of work on this in the district. Um, I also wanna, if I could hold up uh, your calendar, Lisa. Can I see your calendar real quick? Yep, here it is. So these are um, our school calendars every year. These go out. And uh, we are, I just wanna let the board know, we are, we are talking about the idea of going digital on this. I know, I know, I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably have a mixed, a mixed, mixed feelings on this, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a year to think about it. Okay, take a year. The reason it might be good for that, well, well, number one, it's no cost instead of a cost, and number two, the calendar. If we change the date, guess what doesn't happen? We don't go to your house and change your calendar for you. So a digital calendar is live, where this is a dead calendar. That's how it works. So we're, we're, we're playing it out, but these are out. Uh, these will be distributed to families. And they are awesome. And then, is it the September 28th meeting, Evelyn? Where um, Evelyn will be inviting the kids, showing the artwork. It's really special. You'll love it. It's, it's a great little program we do. So that's coming down the pike uh, this month as well. So kudos on that work. And that's um, out of Evelyn's office. And um, they, I think they proofread this about 4,000 times. Five, maybe, 1,000? Um, so it, 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 it better be perfect. I told Sheila it has to be perfect, so let's hope so. Um, so again, you know, amazing staff, resilient, like my Jets, resilient. And uh, sorry, Giants fans, it, it'll get better. Sorry, Jets fans, because we are the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, and we all know. <coughs> I know, I know. So, good, hey, look, you got the Eagles. Whoever's the Eagles fan, at least you got the Eagles. You got the Eagles. Uh, we played Dallas this week, so I don't know what that's going to look like. It didn't look so good last time they were played by a New York team. But back to school night, just so you know, you should know your students back to school night. Make sure you look at that. If you're not sure, check the website. So I'm not going to go over each date. It won't mean that much right now, but everyone knows that. And a uh, great time to, you know, get to hear more about what's going on in your, in your schools. And with that said, I'd like to turn it back over to you, Madam President. Thank you. Oh, you forgot my last name, Rogers. Um, no. Rogers. A memory of that. Just a couple points for the board um, for back to school nights. If you haven't already, uh, please share with Miriam Murphy um, if you are going to be attending your um, school's back to school night so that the principal can be notified. And also, the um, NJSBA annual workshop has been confirmed for everyone. Um, make sure you mark your calendars so if you have it already. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fetter, for that update. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move on now to board. Can I say one more thing? Sure, sure, sure. One more thing I forgot to say. I want to let everyone know at the uh, first October meeting, uh, David and I are going to be doing a, um, a budget update. David's going to be reaching out to the Finance Committee. Uh, there's some, some, always some news. We're hoping it's some good news. 
but we want to be able to share that news um, in a very formal manner and make sure our budget committee is up to speed so they have a chance to ask their questions and get under the skin of what's going on with the, the finances, okay? So David will be reaching out, Mike, and um, we'll get together for that uh, prior to that meeting and uh, make sure we're all on the simpatico about what to um, put out to the public, okay? Yeah. So just to clarify, the first meeting in October Suzanne, is that is correct? <laughs> October 12th? Is that the date? For the no. board meeting? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 10-12 is So it's board. a good meeting to come to for everybody who's watching right now. I don't know how many people we have watching, Dave, right now. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, got about 40 people and about another 10-ish okay, in the audience, 12, 15 in the audience. So okay. um, let's get those people. Everyone invite a couple friends and uh, get people watching so everyone's up to date on what's going on. Okay. Great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. We're going to move on now to board committee and liaison reports. So we'll start with education report. Um, Dr. Raj. Uh, yeah, I just need a second. Don't take your time. You want me to move on to the next one? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, the business operations, unfortunately, Barry is not here. Um, I'm trying to think who. Raj, or Raj and um, Julie uh, were in attendance um, as committee members. So we had a meeting the other day. Um, if you want to provide any kind of an update, or we can always wait, of course, until. Wait for. Wait for Barry to the chair of the yes. committee. Yes. Okay, that's fine. We could do that. Um, Finance committee. Nothing to report. Nothing to we report. We will be meeting soon. Right. Just Prior to, to the know. October meeting. Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, education committee. Yes. I Sorry, heard. Deepa. <laughs> uh, so uh, the education committee met on uh, eight uh, um, seventh uh, September uh, earlier uh, uh, earlier uh, this month. Early. No, this is sorry. Earlier this week, uh, earlier, uh, no, earlier this month, uh, and uh, uh, in uh, uh, presence were um, uh, uh, Madam President, uh, Ms. Karthik, uh, Ms. Hernandez, uh, Mr. Morales, and Ms. Susan, uh, Mrs. Uh, Lockburn, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Mammon, and uh, Mr. Feder, uh, and also uh, Mr. Peter Varela. Uh, the agenda items were. Uh, we discussed about field trips. Uh, field trips uh, post-COVID has become challenging. Uh, the committee was updated about the challenges. Uh, some of them uh, included included um, the uh, restrictions um, imposed by the destinations uh, regarding uh, size or whatever their policies are. Uh, so a new guidance is being worked upon, and uh, the idea is to align field trips for grades across uh, across schools, across school buildings. Uh, so student experience is pretty uh, pretty much the same um, uh, for uh, for every given grade. Uh, there were also questions asked, uh, and uh, the committee members asked questions, and we were uh, given appropriate answers. And um, the other topic uh, that was discussed was honor rolls, um, NHS and honor roll eligibility criteria. Uh, currently, the GPA uh, 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 for uh, eligibility is uh, uh, being um, considered. Uh, it's uh, it's a 3.6 weighted GPA, uh, but that and that means that 60% of juniors or seniors uh, are eligible uh, for this kind of a recognition. Uh, making it uh, uh, making it actually very crowded. Uh, so to make the honor more exclusive, uh, the suggestion uh, to the committee was to uh, make it uh, make the eligibility criteria to move to an eligibility criteria of a GPA of unweighted 3.6. Uh, so uh, the committee is okay with that too, and. Uh, yeah, NHS yeah, yeah. is natural. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> NHS is Nat National Honor Society, um, and uh, the other uh, we were also given uh, um, uh, an uh, update on the transition center. Uh, so the transition center, uh, um, uh, the idea is to support the transition center in their candle making efforts. Uh, so there were a few ideas thrown around, including uh, setting up a pop-up shop at uh, board meetings. So we might see. Uh, a transition center candles um, uh, in uh, one of our board meetings uh, sometime soon. Um, and uh, there was uh, the other topic of uh, extended absences. Uh, so mm. uh, we uh, there was uh, the board approved a, a, a change uh, 
on the extended uh, absence policy a few months ago and uh, there was a review and uh, the committee was presented with uh, uh, some suggestions. Uh, so uh, the suggestion uh, is to tweak the effective day of deregistration. Okay, let me walk back. Uh, the change in policy is that now uh, after 10 days of extended, um, uh, 10 days of extended uh, absences um, is um, essentially deregistration. So uh, the suggestion is to uh, tweak the effective day of deregistration for high school uh, starting day 10 so that uh, they continue to have access to the resources and Google Classroom. Um, and uh, uh, this suggestion did not include uh, K-8. Uh, it was only for the high school, so that because uh, the curriculum is more intensive there. Um, on the question as to how many students um, uh, were typically uh, requesting absences, it is only about uh, between 12 and 24 uh, at high school, and uh, there was no impact on athletics. Uh, there is apparently some impact on GPA, which might be a slight advantage to uh, the absentees uh, since the um, you know, work and performance during the absences do not count. Um, that is still being, uh, uh, it's, 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 there is still some thinking going on there. Uh, the detailed minutes will be up on the portal very shortly. Um, and that is my report for the Ed Committee. Very Thanks, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions? We'll go on policy first. You want to address anything? Any yeah. Hold on, one, one second. Oh, okay, so policy. No, um, I just wanted deepest. to add something. Oh, deepest. Deepest. Question. Sorry. No, no, I didn't have a okay. question. I just Tell had me. some point oh, of clarifications okay. for, for the public. So first is, um, you know, the length of the meeting was fairly long. Yeah. We discussed <laughs> long. and deliberated for more, over two hours. Yeah. I thank the administration. They had a very long day after work and, you know, they stayed on and answered all our questions. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Mamin, as well as... Um, uh, Ms. Lakbon was there, so I really appreciate all the time that they spent. For the National Honor uh, Role Society, um, the reason, uh, you know, when the committee deliberated, I just want to present it to the to our stakeholders is that the reason we, um, you know, um, we agreed with uh, Mr. Varela's suggestion was also to keep in spirit with the criteria for the National Honor, uh, Honor Society, which is not just academic, but also extracurriculars and community service and all that. So we wanted a more well-rounded approach. Uh, and that was, uh, you know, we deliberated a lot on that. Mrs. Hernandez also had so many questions about it and we went back and forth on, on the criteria. The committee was in agreement. Uh, the other thing I wanted to also point out was the deregistration of the high school, which starts on day 10. I'm grateful to the administration uh, keeping in consideration for, uh, you know, the credits that high schoolers require to graduate. Uh, the teachers have, you know, have uh, are going to sort of put in more effort to ensure that on day 10 they get registered or, or deregistered and not on day one. So they continue and they have access to their resources and uh, and I think it's uh, it's going to be very helpful to our high schoolers. We also expect that our community will support us and not, um, you know, uh, will be in a situation where the under that this is just taken um, in the right spirit, right? So that's something I wanted to add. So thank you, Dr. Raj, for the detailed report. Thank you, Deepa. Mr. Petter. Um, I think I think they've covered it. I think that okay. it was a really a good meeting. That a, a lot of um, important things happened. The, the National Honor Society also the concept of weighted unweighted is uh, a topic. And what we're finding is that concept of weighting a grade. There's some merit to that in some places, but we want to also stay consistent with surrounding like districts yeah. who do not wait for NHS. And so the, the recommendation is to not wait for that. Wait meaning um, if you take an honors class, you get extra points on the GPA. You still would, you know, right now we still wait, so that isn't, that isn't being taken away. But the idea of what is a National Honor Society member is um, now that the, the, if we go that direction, it would be unweighted. So a 3-6, meaning if you're a student who um, is not in an honors course, but you're putting everything into it, and that's where you are. You have a better chance now of getting access. Um, at the same time, it takes away no access from anybody. So it's a, it's a really win-win. It's a nice approach, and it is aligned with colleges. Colleges are not looking at weighted scores. Right. You know, we, we all like to get those 4.6s and 4.8s, but at the end of the day, college wants your unweighted average. And your unweighted average doesn't, you know, each, and the reason they do that is that's how you level the playing field in a country, right? Because every school does it differently. So unweighted is the same. An A is an A. Um, one school might wait or have the opportunity for more 
let's say, AP courses than another school. Therefore, that child, just by opportunity, is going to have a higher GPA. If you don't do that, then that doesn't happen. And that, that's how the colleges are looking at weighted versus unweighted. So our neighbors don't use weighted averages. We're now aligned with our neighbors, and it's really positive for the school. So good job, education committee. Um, can I just clarify when, what grade will this be starting with? Um, incoming, this year's incoming freshmen. So that anyone, it's a good point, anyone who is already in the system, they stay on the old system because you can't change the system midway through for them. That would be, uh, they would have no way to recover necessarily if they would have made different decisions or right. whatever. So it's new, new plan, start with the freshmen. And this will be communicated to the freshman class? The high school will take care of that. It's already taken care of. Yeah. Very good. Any other questions for the education committee? No? Very good. Oh, Julie, yes. Just a little clarification um, for us, for those of us who don't know much about the weighted system. Um, how does that differ? Uh, like, what is the weighted system for those of us who don't know? So, um, let's say you're a junior, and let's say there's three different levels of English. Right. You could take academic English, which is your traditional English, mm -hmm. uh, and let's say you get an A. Mm -hmm. Your GPA would get a 4.0 for the okay. A. Okay. If you're in honors English and you got an A, you would get a 4.5. It's weighted 0.5. Okay. If you're in AP Lit or Lang and you get an A, that's a full one-point weight. So you'd get a 5.0. Now, mm -hmm. again, that's only South Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And every, every district does that differently. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't translate for Harvard, let's say. Harvard is interested that you took the AP course yeah. and how well you did on the AP test, right. but not as interested on the weighted average of your school's choice of GPA. So you would get that the, your transcript shows a weighted average and an unweighted average. Mm -hmm. So if you got straight A's, no matter what courses you took, your average would be a 4.0. If you got straight A's and every course you took was in honors or AP, your average could be a 4.7. Okay. But on, on the unweighted side, it's still a 4.0, and the colleges will look at the unweighted side, along with what courses you have taken in comparison to what courses were available in your high school. AP credits are, I mean, AP courses are college-based credits, credits, right? Some, some colleges will take credits if you pass a certain score on the AP test. Some will not. Um, it differs from college to college, and some colleges have uh, maximums they'll take. So even if you took 10 AP courses, their max might be you can take up to two that you got a score of five on, let's say. Well, so it what, wouldn't matter necessarily, depending on the college. Um, what percentage would you say uh, colleges and universities that are maybe top tier colleges accept AP credits? I would, I would have to. I, I'm not, I'm, offhand, I, I wouldn't I, guess I can that. just make a general statement. Okay. Most colleges will. Most, uh, there's public universities out there, Rutgers University, Rowan, Monmouth. Um, some of them take AP classes, and the only reason I know that is my daughter. And mm -hmm. some of your kids have applied to those colleges and have gotten AP credit. Okay. I, I mean, there's probably a percentage out there, but it's too broad. There's so many universities. Any other comments? Yes. Um, it's silly, but it's not silly to me. I, um, so does that mean that a special needs student who has a 3.6 or, or the required GPA absolutely has an opportunity to get in honor society? Yes, it does. That's excellent. Yes, does. That's excellent. That's very valid point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you for that, Mike. Thanks. And hopefully we have parents out there of special needs uh, students that are listening mm -hmm. because this is huge. I think yep. it's huge. Levels of field. Yeah, it does. It really does. Any they other... work hard, too. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. So for those that want to remember which is which, weighted versus unweighted, as I told the curriculum committee, the weighted is you gain more points, you gain more weight. So just remember, weighted is more. <laughs> it's the only way that I can remember it. Because <laughs> you do get confused when you don't deal with it every day. Okay, policy committee, update, please. 
the policy committee didn't meet uh, recently, so I don't have anything to report. But I do have something to add regarding the education committee that we we all met about. Uh, um, I just want to sort of explain to our, you know, to our community here that there's a lot of work that goes into these committees, mm. the pre-work and the post-work and, uh, you know, deliberating also during committee uh, proceedings, uh, prior work, setting up the agenda, reviewing the minutes later on after, after the committee work is done, which Dr. Raj uh, sort of circulates to the committee members. So there's a lot that goes on that the public cannot see, but I, I just wanted to sort of... Uh, explain, you know, the sort of the whole scope of work that goes into some of this, because she's re reading a report. It should not be misunderstood, like, hey, there's a rattle off of a report, and there's no pre-work and no post-work and no interim work that has happened. There's a lot of back and forth with the administration, with the committee members, during the committee meetings. So there's a lot going on. So it's not just the two hours of deliberation we have done on that particular day. There is pre- and post-work that happens as well. Yeah. And meetings are recorded by the chairs. The yes, committee chairs. we have minutes, yes. yes. Thank you for that. Okay, moving on to liaison reports. Anybody to my right? Ms. Hernandez. Ms. Rogers. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to the Commission on Women uh, meeting last, yesterday, and I just want to encourage you, it actually ties a lot into the National Honor Society when we talk about the well-rounded child, where we look at so much more than a GPA. Colleges look at so much more than a GPA, and they're looking at what kind of person are you? How's your character? Do you give back? How are you working with your community? Well, the Commission on Women is a wonderful opportunity to work for your community. And we are looking for kids in our middle school and our high school to join us. Um, we are going to be having our domestic violence walk on, uh, mark your calendars. You're marking your calendars out there? Mm -hmm. I always feel like I'm on a commercial when I'm talking on this. <laughs> <laughs> October 15th, but the Commission on Women also, for all the kids that volunteer, you do get community service hours for the high school. Um, it, we, we're going to be looking at things of um, cancer issues with women and employment opportunities for women and um, colleges for women. It's all different women opportunities and situations on this committee. We meet twice a month on Wednesday, the second and fourth Wednesday um, at the park. What's that building right next to the municipal building? Public Works. Public Works. I was going to say the parks, <laughs> but I knew that was wrong. Um, yeah, so, you know, if it, women come on out and join us, bring your kids with you. It's a really good opportunity to get involved and do some really good work. So, and there's my PBS. Thank you so much, Ms. <laughs> Hernandez. <laughs> Anyone else uh, to my right for a liaison? No. To my left, any liaison committee reports? Very good. Okay, just remember we have back to school night coming up. Um, great, great opportunity um, to uh, visit the schools. Okay, we are now going to move on to public comments on the consent agenda items only. And I get to read my piece. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. Complete copies of the rules that govern this portion of the meeting are available to the public back of the room, online, or you can obtain an advanced copy by contacting the board office during regular business hours. We reserve the right to limit each speaker to no more than three minutes. Mr. Pulowski will indicate when you have 15 seconds remaining. It is our plan to listen to each member of the public. We will note all questions and comments made. Once all questions and comments from all members of the public are made, the Board of Education will respond if necessary to questions or comments in the most timely and efficient manner available. Please consider not repeating questions or comments made by other members of the public. When recognized, please approach the podium and state and spell your name, place of residence, and or your group affiliation. The first public comment is for consent agenda items only. There will be a second opportunity for the public to comment on any matter. Uh, do we have any members of the public that pre-registered? No. Are there any audience members that would like to comment just on the consent agenda items only? No? Very good. No comments. We will close this portion of the public comments. Next order of business is old business. Seeing none at this time, we shall move to new business. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, next order of business, old business, seeing none, we shall move to new business, seeing none. Oh, and there's no new business, sorry. The next order of business is the consent agenda review. Mr. Pawlowski. Thank you, Madam President. We have a consent agenda tonight that is not that long in length, so we can uh, buzz through this pretty quick. Uh, items 1.1 through 1.4 four is all of our business operations. We're approving a lot of non-public uh, funding through chapter 192, 193, some technology orders for our non-public schools. Norlmont School uh, also approving a public security um, with an SRO contract with the township. So, or with, um, for their SRO contract. The second reading and adoption we have for a policy on um, our sick leave. We're approving a local mentor program, some, uh, a statement of assurance for the local mentor program. We're approving uh, professional development consultating services um, with Dr. Gary Abamont. We're accepting a research grant, approving an updated pricing agreement with Kelly Services, approving the renewal of a license uh, for us to be able to use QuickBooks to manage all of our student activity accounts. We also have a license agreement uh, for the Cure Arena for graduation um, coming up this year in, what, June uh, for the high school. Uh, so that, that, um, that moves our facility, our graduation um, events back to the Cure, Insur Cure Assur Insurance Arena in uh, Trenton. We have travel reimbursement expenses, student field trips. We also have our professional services that we're increasing. We have, I'd like to just point out really quick on the extension of professional services for Beata Home Healthcare. Just know that um, we found some invoices from 2122 and some invoices from 2223 uh, that need to be paid and that I had to put into a motion just because it's um, a one-off. Um, so that's uh, item number 115. We have a preschool uh, education aid carryover for funds using uh, some leftover funds from our preschool grant from last year to um, support our transportation costs in our preschool program this year. We're approving the, uh, another, another round of stabilization aid application. Uh, this application is a lot more extensive than what it was in the past. Uh, my office is working on that now. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to submit the application prior to October 6th, and I need that uh, approval done prior so that this, this grant operates in a fashion where the sooner you get it in seems to be like the better off you do with regards to funding. So that's a, that's kind of like a rush order. The 118 is, we're also approving the creation of an advocacy, advocacy committee. And that's a committee that's going to address the impact of uh, New Jersey's funding formula on the South Brunswick Township School District, as well as other school districts that have been or will be negatively impacted by that S2 formula. We also have an emergency purchase today. Um, I was at a conference and got a phone call. We had a motor at Cambridge uh, in an HVAC unit um, uh, fail and we had 12 classrooms with no AC. As you could imagine, that is an emergency. Yeah. Um, we, uh, in buildings and grounds, uh, Mr. Redfield does a wonderful job ensuring that all of our students have a educational environment that's conducive to learning. This was um, an emergency that happened um, this morning. We found a vendor that had the motor. Uh, we did an emergency uh, motion, approve emergency purchase only because we were unable to get all of the um, business administrator signatures because I was out of town prior to the purchase of the motor. So Brian was able to get a requisition, get the motor in the facility or the HVAC unit will be up and running again tomorrow morning. Uh, so our cherubs can uh, get back to learning and doing better uh, in the classroom. So improved, uh, that's your approve of your emergency purchase. And then we have personnel and that's your agenda. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Mr. Porowski to my right? No, to my left. Any questions? Sure. Questions? Yeah, but microphone. Okay. 
Is that okay? okay? I had a question on 118, which is approving the creation of the advocacy committee. I know that we discussed this briefly, but I'd like for the benefit of our community to understand, and I, I want to express, firstly, my confidence in the board of putting together a robust committee for this advocacy work. This is a lot of work, it's hard work, it's arduous work, it's a long haul job to be done, and we all must stay invested in this. So just for, a as a point of clarification, if you could sort of explain to the community how you propose to put this committee together, what are its goals, and how long do you expect you know, our work to last, uh, what, are, you know, what are your thoughts on this? It's okay, Mr. Feder, I'm going to answer that question. So the advocacy committee, as was stated, is to, um, to be put together to support the South Brunswick Township community in its effort to provide information, to speak out at Trenton, to get to the legislatures, to legislators, to understand the impact of this district. So what I have been doing over the summer um, was putting together uh, two, F two pieces. One is an explanation of what S2 is, what has happened over the past, I've lost track, six or seven years, uh, how much money we've lost, and the impact to this district as well as the other districts. So that's the first thing that, I'm work that I've finished. It's a draft. The second piece that I put together was an FAQ. Um, I came up with questions that people in general would maybe want to ask. I've completed that, and as a matter of fact, um, Smitha, it will be my alpha test. Uh, Smitha is going to review that piece, that group of information. She's gonna be my first test to determine if I missed anything, if Mr. Fetter missed anything. Um, that is a very basic understanding, because we, we have to talk to people that don't really know what S2 means. I mean, it's the bill number, but people don't understand it. Once Smitha puts her stamp of approval on it, um, I'm then going to do a beta test to this whole board, okay, for all of you to look at the information that we need to put out to the community. That information will be going out on the website. Mr. Fetter and I have kind of talked a little bit about it yet, because school started, I didn't want to bother him prior to school, but um, I want to make sure that there's a dedicated part to the website, the school district website, where people can go to better understand um, what the advocacy committee is. In parallel, I think, um, I have to think this through a little bit better, um, I want to create a committee, but not a large, you know, it can't be a very large people, we won't get anything done. Mr. Fetter, of course, will have his input. Um, but it, it's more or less for the people to be involved in um, coming to Trenton, making phone calls, getting their neighbors and families together. Everybody will have the opportunity, you know, 8,000 students if they want, to write a letter. That letter will, a template of that letter will be accessible on the website. Um, but the committee itself, we, I, Mr. Fetter and I have to really sit down and formulate the idea of how many people, what are their requirements, what do we really want them to do. Um, we're going to need a lot of people to go to Trenton and, and speak out and, and testify in front of the various committees. So that's where we are. We want to move on that within, the next, within this month because, as um, Dave has just mentioned, we will be starting on the budget. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Is there any further information? No, thank you very much. So I'm really looking forward to participation from the community, especially on this very important topic. Uh, the board will provide its full support, as you know, mm -hmm. um, Madam President. And I'm really looking forward to contributing to this committee. Yeah. Uh, and thank you so much for all the hard work that you've put in. I've been seeing all of the work that's happening and that uh, will be now sort of exhibited to the community as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Yes, Mr. Nunes. I just want to commend Lisa. Um, as they, Deepa said before, you guys don't really realize how much work goes on behind the scenes. I asked for a pay raise. Scott said I couldn't have one. <laughs> he did double my salary. But there's so much time that goes on to what we do. But Lisa runs circles around us. She just runs circles around us. And she needs credit where credit is due. I've been out three nights this week on my little committees. <laughs> the work that Lisa does, and I'm in education. I have run the gamut from 
teacher up to director, and being on this board and seeing what she does blows, I don't, would never do, I don't want to ever do it. <laughs> what she does blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And she need, people, you guys need to know that. You need to know that what she does is amazing. The time she puts into stuff is amazing. Whether you agree with a point or you don't agree with a point, the work is out there. She is one of the biggest advocates I've ever met, and I have lived here my whole life in this township, and I thank you. I didn't pay you, but thank you. <laughs> okay, triple that salary. Thank you. you know, well, so. public education is, to me, is very important. Um, you don't really realize it, I think, until you become an adult and you have kids and realize how important education is. Um, just, just to uh, clarify, um, the, uh, what uh, uh, Scott and Laura said, it was a joke. We are not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get paid. Yeah, right. it's, it's, a joke. it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Just so, kidding. <laughs> uh, and uh, I had two comments actually. I uh, had two comments, not questions. Uh, comment on 1.9, Consent Agenda 1.9. It is a uh, uh, National Science Foundation granted, uh, uh, National Science Foundation funded a study. Um, uh, by mind print that will be uh, that will be run in our schools, right? So that's something exciting. Maybe something good will come out of it, um, uh, and it is free. Uh, so uh, that's very interesting. That's very exciting. And uh, for the uh, on the uh, the negative thing is uh, on my negative feedback is on 1.5. The sick leave, sick leave. Um, uh, yeah. I'm absolutely, this is for the record, I'm absolutely helpless being forced to vote, but I just don't agree with this mandated policy that's been forced down our throat by Trenton. And um, it is only going to uh, help uh, increase our expenditure, um, and it's, uh, it's absolutely uncalled for. And most importantly, it is taking away our ability to make decisions at the, uh, at the local level. Uh, as uh, as many of our colleagues, many of my colleagues mentioned, we uh, at the committee level, you know, I was a part of negotiations committee, and Lisa was uh, leading that, and we invested a lot of time and effort negotiating with the unions, uh, good faith negotiations, uh, and uh, uh, and all of it uh, around sick leave is now negated by uh, this mandated policy. Um, essentially, the reason why we should all be worried about is the overreach, uh, Trenton's overreach, the mighty state of New Jersey is actually encroaching upon our ability to make decisions at the local level. Uh, so I hope um, we all, as all, say, uh, all voters, the community, recognize this threat um, and uh, that this trend is just so much larger than the sick leave policy because it is uh, our uh, it is all about the loss of our um, loss of our ability to make decisions uh, for the good of our community mm -hmm. uh, in our interests mm -hmm. um, and it is the erosion is one mandated policy at a time uh, the lo the longer i spend at, uh, in on this board the more i realize the overreach and the the consequences of this overreach in terms of our inability to do things for our own community though we know uh, what exactly the community needs. Um, our hands are tied, and this is one of those times where I am absolutely disgusted, but I'm also very helpless, and I'm going to vote for it because it is a mandated policy, and there is not much of a choice here. I, I have a comment about that, too. Um, that policy, um, unfortunately, was snuck in prior to the summer recess by legislature, so we really did not have an opportunity for public comment at legislation. So unfortunately, these things happen, and um, but that doesn't mean we don't continue our efforts to speak out. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, one second. Just, Did you want to say something? Comment. Okay, Deepa, go ahead. Yeah, as uh, chair of policy, when we, del when we read this uh, sick leave policy that was brought to us by the administration, um, as uh, Dr. Raj rightly pointed out, we were astounded by the policy itself and the wordings in it. I recall uh, discussing this with our superintendent and, and with Mr. Pulaski, and you know, it just blew my mind, the wordings uh, you know, in the policy. I encourage everybody who's watching, uh, either at home or here, uh, please read that policy. It will be available for, for everybody on our website and, and make your own conclusions. And as uh, Dr. Raj rightly pointed out, this takes away a lot of power from local school boards to make decisions for their communities 
Uh, it takes away a lot of negotiating powers. It's it's just um, unbelievable. So please do read this, uh, read the policy. We are we have uh, we have been mandated to accept it, so we are going to do that. But we have grave concerns on it. Mr. Thank um, uh, different topic. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Oh, oh, one second. Sorry. If we're mandated to, to pass this policy, why is it on our agenda item? It was already passed. No, why, no. Why, no. Why, why is it the second item? one? The second read. read. Yeah, the, the second, second read. read. The second read. We have to we vote today. Today, we do this. But if we're mandated to vote, then we have no reason to have that there. You still have to. It's just parliamentary. Part of the it's part of process. The parliamentary procedures and <laughs> rules associated with with it. You have to you have to approve. You have to accept in public a mandated policy from the state government. Well, you, you have I mean, but you have to I mean, literally te technically, yeah. but you have to put no, you don't have to accept it. You could debate let, let, it. I know, but you're going into an area. It. Yes, let please do. <laughs> so a, a policy comes through based upon law and the district is responsible to adopt policies that reflect law. The process of adopting a policy in some policies, you have choices in this policy. There were choices the board made. So it isn't that it's a blanket. You had the board policy committee had to make decisions yes. about certain things, and those are decisions that you received already in your first read and your second read. So what you're adopting or what you're being asked to adopt, you can vote whatever you want. What you're being asked to consider are how the policy committee read the law, the policy, and made decisions that are up for grabs in the board's purview. Just because it's mandated doesn't mean you have to you vote yes or no. Right. It just is a, it's a man, we, you know, the district has to follow law. Right. So that's all. Um, my, oh, my topic is just a little bit on the um, stabilization application mm -hmm. that David mentioned. I'll get this back to you, mm -hmm. David. So this is a, another example of Trenton with, um, I, I, we don't know what they're doing. We don't, we don't actually know what the stabilization aid is going to be. We have no idea. We have no idea it was coming. The timeline they give us is nearly impossible. So we needed board, board approval before a certain time just to do the application. I mean, it's, 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 it's just an insane process. So we're going to go ahead and fill it out because there could be money on the table. We don't want to leave any money on the table. We fill out every application there is. I mean, uh, Black Horse Lane is filling out applications and grants for the state of New Jersey seems like, seemingly like 24 hours a day. Uh, instead of, I'll give an example of one that we're dealing with right now. This is, this, is this, this is the application for stabilization aid. As you know, this current budget, the one we are in, the 23-24 school year, currently is using $4 million of stabilization aid in our budget. That money is not real or I should say not sustainable. That money will not be here next year. Remember, we start the year next year minus $4 million. So we don't know what the stabilization is gonna be. We don't know what we're gonna get. If we're gonna get anything, we have no idea. We don't even know when right. you, you, and when it will be available. We just don't know anything. But what we do know is there's a package on the table to put on to hopefully get money for the township of South Brunswick, for the district. So we're filling it out. We'll meet with the finance committee to go over the specifics. Then we'll, we'll explain it to the board and the community uh, after that. But it's so fledgling because it, these things happen like smack in the middle of opening a school year. And by the way, fill out an application for high impact tutoring. Fill out an application for stabilization aid that you don't even know is coming. It, it, it's lunacy, but we, we're not gonna not do it. We're gonna try and get as much money as we can, even if it's stabilization aid. But right now, remember, this budget that's keeping things afloat is $4 million of, of, of stabilization aid, which goes away at the end of the year, disappears. That means we start the budget next year minus $4 million. So hopefully the stabilization aid will give us a lot more money so that we can offset the minus $4 million we start with next year. But I just wanted to share that with you. It's, 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 a, it's a very debilitating situation from Trenton. Um, there's no communication from Trenton. Um, about anything, they just give us work to do, and that's fine. We do it because that's what we do. But it's, uh, it would be nice to, to kind of know things. We didn't know this one was coming. No one knew it was coming. So I've speaking, spoken to many superintendents. David's speaking to many 
I've spoken to many business administrators, and it's all like, what? When I first came, we didn't even, I didn't even came with a memo. <laughs> it's like, fill this out. Yeah, just fill it out. Yeah. We have, a, we have a commissioner of education who does not provide information to us about things like, hey, you might be entitled to money. So either way, just know we're doing it, and we'll be sharing the specifics, uh, which we'll have no idea about until later. But um, we'll get it done. That's all. Is there any question down here to the left? No questions? Thank you, Mr. Fetter. Any other questions? Very good. All right, Mr. Polowski, let us have a roll call. I'm sorry, may I have a, mo I did that already. <laughs> Motion for uh, approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Mitchell, I go this way now. Second, Miss, Miss Julie. <laughs> Second, roll call please. I'll come back and forth. Roll call, Mr. Polowski. Miss Julie Ferrara. Yes, sir. Mrs. Laura Hernandez. Yes. Mrs. Deepa Karthik. Yes. Ms. Alicia Khan? Yes. Mr. Raja Krishna? Yes. Mr. Mike Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Dr. Smith Raj? Yes. Mrs. Lisa Rogers? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That completes the um, action items part of the agenda. Okay, moving on. We are now going to the separate second opportunity for public comment. This is on any topic. This is the second opportunity for the public to comment on any matter. You are reminded that the board recognizes the value of comments on educational issues and that you are limited to three minutes. Again, at the podium, state your name, spell your name, and announce your place of residence and or your group affiliation. Do we have any members, sir, uh, Mr. Posse, that are pre-registered? No, we do not. Very good. Pre -registrations. Are there any audience members who wish to make a public comment? If you would like to make a public comment, if I could just ask, maybe just move down a little bit, that would make it easier. Thank you. Hi, Lisa. My name is Mukesh Bhatt, M-U-K-E-S-H-B-H-A-T-T. I live in Dean's Pond, and I don't have any affiliation with any organization. Thank you for your time. First of all, uh, thank you guys for doing the whole safety study, and congratulations, even though you guys have did it other way around, but I guess we are figuring it out that the safety study has actually bought a lot of good things. Summerfield actually got the buses back because somehow they realized that it's not safe. And, and I'm coming here for the last three meetings, and that's the only thing we are telling, specifically the board and the administrator, and that we need to follow processes, specifically the processes which impact a lot of families, right? In this particular case, you said we call friends and families and we did a community outreach and they decided none of them were the impacted families. Board should have asked, hey, how many of you are actually whose kids are not going to get buses? Simple, right? Then you should have asked the board, hey, hey, Scott, have you done safety study? Have you reached out to all of this? All happened after we came and pleaded and shouted in front of you. This is the process. Then the third one should have been, OK, now let's bring the community together and talk to them and say, you know, we have a limited budget. This is what the safety study is telling us and what exactly we need to do. There are certain hard choices we have to make, but then bring everyone together and follow a process. Simple, right? Now, it might be very difficult for Scott because once you have a job security for the next six years, you try to get slightly more aggressive. If my job would have given me job security, even for a one day, trust me, I would have acted and behaved differently. But anyway, I'm not talking about Scott, and I have no personal agenda with him as such as board, because I believe board has to have an oversight, specifically on hard decisions, and start asking those right questions. And this is a simple example of buses. Now you are doing it the other way around. You should have just done it before. It's very nice to do self-praise around a lot of these topics, but I don't think so. Community really need to get into the nitty. And I know, Lisa, you're doing about that whole S2, but the S2 formula is so simple. Anyone can understand. It's on the website. They have given the examples, and I know it's hard. And I know it's hard for Scott as well, specifically on the Trenton, going, getting budgets cut. It never was easy for anyone. And I also understand that how painful it is when the budgets are cut and you have to make those decisions. The only thing the community actually wants that have empathy, follow a simple logical process slowly, and I think no one is going to criticize anyone. I know that your jobs and everything is difficult as well. It's an unpaid, thankless jobs for you guys. You're taking your time off. It's not that easy. But just follow the process. Over the last three, four, five years, and as in when I'm getting more interested in this, I'm finding a lot and a lot of these issues which are there. Anyway, one last thing. 
just, just, just one last thing which I want to say is that, see, the character usually comes when you have to make hard decisions. Personality is day-to-day -day action. And you all of us has personality. But characters reflect when you have to make those hard decisions. So show your characters. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for your comment. Next. I forgot I had a <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Shastri Veluri. And uh, you can spell S-A-S-T-R-I. Um, this is, uh, uh, I live in uh, Manmod Junction. I'm, and I'm sorry, you live in? Manmod Junction, South Ridge Hills. Thank you. And I don't have any affiliation with any organizations. Um, so I, this is, I have two daughters going to high school this year. This is in regards to courtesy bus. And with heartfelt emotions and great respect, on all the women who are sitting here, including the small kids that I see less than 20 years. With respect and emotions, I, I touch upon the topic that we have been discussing. And I just want to voice out again that the courtesy school buses are very much needed, especially for the girls of age 15 years. They are walking for 45 minutes one way and coming back from the school, more specifically doing their monthly cycles. If every woman understands that, this is a, not an easy task. So one should consider that. And I respect all the women. Those who respect women should not have done this. OK? And this is not just based on the previous conversations. This is based on the first-hand experience that we have experienced in the last three days. Would you do that? Do you vote for that? I won't. So again, with a great respect on Dr. Scott Feder, who had taken this decision, along with the most trusted board members, we leave it on to you to make another assessment and see how best you can do for the kids. This is point number one. My second point is that we are walking out of our community and crossing New Road. New Road. In the morning, busy hours, no vehicle stops, and there are many vehicles passing by with 45 miles per hour, and there is no walkway signal to cross that path, to reach to the walkway and go through the trailer. So we kindly request you to consider this, make an assessment with the safety officers or whoever it is, and take necessary action. I hope this gets resolved. If not, in next one month, in due course of time, during this school year. So I appreciate if you can make an action. And this is a kind request to all the board members whom we elected, trusted, and we don't show up here. It doesn't mean that we have to be present. So I have a life insurance or medical insurance with the doctor. I don't go to the doctor every time. I go to the doctor only when I feel sick. So we feel a little upset in the sense that it is not justice to our kids walking 45 minutes. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. And I greatly respect all the people who are sitting here and making the decisions. Thank you and for as your Mokesh hope. said, your job is not easy. I know that. <laughs> we go through a lot of budgeting process in our organizations. And it's not easy to convince anybody. And one gets convinced, the other one get, doesn't get convinced. Thank you. It's our job to do. And we should feel what we have done is correct. Thank you. So in this aspect, I'm just thinking about Very Thank good. You. Thank you so much for your comments. Next. Good evening, everyone. My name is Magesh Kamalakannan, M-A-G-E-S-H-K-A-M-A-L-A-K-A-N-N-A-N. I live in Dayton, South Brunswick. So I'd like to talk about this busing issue, which has been going on for quite some time, almost two months. I hope it is resolved, but it is not. I feel horrible when, even as adults, we don't walk on the roads for two miles in the morning and in the evening. And we expect small children to walk on the roads that when the peak traffic like you said, in the morning time, crossing roads like New Road, which even we hesitate to cross in those peak times. I request the Board of Education members and school administration to park the vehicle 2.5 miles away from Crossroads North School and walk with five plus pounds of backpack and a music instrument. Morning, 2.5 miles, evening, 2.5 miles. And then touch your heart and say whether it, it is comfortable for you. And we are expecting small children to walk. 
The traffic in our township is already pretty bad around morning 8 a.m. We all know that. I, I even went around the first two days of school and it was not great. And we expect another 100 plus cars to go on the road and 150 children walk around the schools. The school administration and board of education should remember that any walking child gets injured or killed in an accident. The board members and school administration, I don't know whether we're legally responsible, but you're morally responsible for that. The township is going to spend additional money on police and crossing guards at different places. And that is also going to come from the taxpayers' money. So as taxpayers, we are the ultimate losers. Any saving the school makes, that 400K, we end up paying in other ways to the township. Instead, you can consider a busing op a subscription option, wherein you can collect some money from the parents and adjust some money in some other areas. And also the joy of a bus ride taken away from a child just because her home is two miles from the, from the schools. And this is already a pretty outdated rule, maybe 60, 70 years old rule. And I spoke to Senator Zwicker also about this. And maybe he also agreed. Maybe they are looking, they will look at changing that in the future. And the ideal sequence of events should have been complete the safety study first, provide the study to the board members, Board members should have ideally asked for it before approving. After the study, review by the board members, they should have asked Scott and school administration further questions before approving, assuming even if they want to approve it. But what happened is approval first, and now the safety study is going on, which is not right. Anyway, what has happened is past, and is, and is a mistake. Sometimes, sometimes mistakes do happen. We are all human beings. Let's accept that and we can move on. That's three minutes, sir. Yeah, That's I sincerely request the school admin to reconsider the decision and revert back the buses to the remaining $5. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your comments. Any other comments from the audience? Hi, my name is Vivek Kumar, V I V E K K U M A R. I'm a resident of South Brunswick. So, the reason I come to speak here is uh, about the student safety, right? Uh, all of us, in general, agree to student safety. All of us kind of work for student safety, but the actions of this board and the school district has been drastically against what uh, the opinions they have been giving out. The busing for children, especially the elementary, the middle school children, within two miles, cutting those, I don't know how that was justified. The other thing is, some of us spoke about the way this was done, right? I don't think the due process was followed. It, it may be just my opinion, but I would like to see the details where I'm wrong. There were, as far as we understand, it was cut. Once people came in and asked questions, there was a process created to kind of evaluate on these routes which were bought. And that's how we discovered the piece of route proposed for a particular community was not even approved by the owner of the land. So mm -hmm. such kind of decision making by this committee, what does that indicate to the public? It's just that what, whatever decisions are being made up, and it is going all the way backwards, whereas some, some due diligence has been, should have been done. This, the busing was restored for that particular community. It is, uh, it is not right to say the busing was restored for the community. I think there are some banded solution provided to get out of the jam of this safety discovery made by the route proposed for the students to be taken. Right now, the situation is students are walking to 522. There is no stop, no signage. They are boarding the bus on 522. So that's how you have represented students for their safety. 
The second item I wanted to talk about is mental health. The mental health of the students. I think you go a couple of the meetings, you go since pandemic started, there has been a lot of talk and action about mental health of the students. But ultimately what you ended up signing off is realigning of the placement of schools location for a large number of special ed education kids. That's three minutes, which sir. All, which already have burden of so many things. So how do you live it's three with minutes, such sir. decisions? Thank you for your comments. I, I, I can't really understand. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for much. your time and service. Thank you. Did you, did you any other comments? Yes. Hi, my name is Siva Vijay Kumar. I'm from Summerfield, South Brunswick community. Okay. I'm just going okay. to continue on my friend. Um, the Can you just come into the microphone a little bit? Yeah. Thank you. I'm just going to continue on the same topic uh, my friend has uh, talked about, uh, the bus stopping on 522. Um, not going to bring a lot of details, but I feel that I'm going to escalate to the South Brunswick Township to see what they have to say, because I clearly see that it says no stopping or standing at that right at, at the spot where the bus stops to pick literally 14 kids. Um, that's, that's about it. And the second point what I want to bring up is for the next, the, for, the, for another community that is Dean Pond, they did a study um, of how the traffic is going to be. They, going to, they, predict, they did a predictive analysis, I would say, that is, is the is the traffic uh, safe enough for kids to cross across the uh, pedestrian signs? But the study was done prior to the uh, school traffic that picked up. I, I would uh, again. I'm going to not bring up any any comments here, but I'm going to write it to township to see if that study is good enough or do they have to repeat it. That's about it. Thank you Thanks. for your comment. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> any other comments from the audience? Yes. Good evening, my name is Bina, B-I-N-A, Meta, M-E-H-T-A, resident of South Brunswick for last 19 plus years. Uh, I've been attending this for quite a few years now, at least 17, 18 years. For last two years, we have been hearing that we are going to be getting budget cuts because of this S2 funding formula. And uh, since last year, we've been seeing what the framework would look like. So what do we do when we have a situation? Obviously, we act and action is required. So last week, along with two other good fellows, I was the co-host where we had invited our legislators. Uh, we had Senator Andrew Zwicker, Assemblyman Roy Freeman, and the new candidate, Michelle Drulis. And there are members who I see over here who were also present in the audience. And I see some members over here from our Board of Ed. We all came in there as the community member. And the purpose of me and my two fellow co-hosts was to create a platform for the community to ask questions to people who represent us in Trenton that this is the problem and what are you going to do to resolve for us? I personally had asked question to Senator Zwicker about this S2 funding formula. Long story short, and there are witness to it because people heard it, uh, there was a question from uh, one of the gentlemen in the audience for busing also. Yes, there is a problem and Senator Zwicker made it very clear that the problem has come from Trenton and it has to be fixed in Trenton. We offered, I offered to work collectively as the community to our chosen ones that how we can get the best result from Trenton. And he also said one more thing that if it does not get fixed now, next year we are looking for more cuts. Having said that, what seems like a battleground over here today uh, actually is going to be worse next year if we don't work collectively on this. Talking of traffic, I reside on 27 Deans Lane. It's a county road. My daughter has been going to school for last uh, almost, you know, 12 years. 
Rarely there would be a month pass where I would have not made a complaint to the police department because traffic not stopping at the stop sign of the bluffs. We now have Starbucks where we have four signs, no left turn, and at least few times a day, people do make a left turn, get into our parking lot also, and every other month I'm in municipal building, you know, letting our council know the problems that we face. The truth is, for 15 years, they send police seconds. every time I complain, but let's work on this together, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for Thank your you comments. comments. Anyone else? Oh. Oh. Hi, Lisa Garwood. Um, I live in Princeton Walk, L-I-S-A-G-A-R-W-O-O-D. Um, I want to just clarify a few things that seem to keep not being heard. Mukesh, the board did go to the community. It was called the Citizens Committee, and I urge you to learn about that because you keep saying that they did not. Um, and to the other commenters, I know how frustrating it is to lose a bus. I know you were, you were counting on that, but ultimately, the responsibility is yours. Your children don't have to walk. They don't have to carry their instruments for two miles. All of us at some point as parents need to take the responsibility. No, because I'm speaking to you guys. Well, you don't have to listen. Excuse me? Please pay respect to Reclaiming the my time. They respected you. It doesn't matter. It is a public comment. It's a public comment. Please, Please Reclaiming stop. my time. Um, you can drive them, you can set up carpools, there are a million things you can do. Ask the more, I guess, experienced parents in the community who've been doing it for years, if not generations. Um, Shastri, your misogynistic attitude was shocking. Yeah. As opposed, uh, along the line of extended vacations from earlier this evening, Boy, would teachers love it if that was pulled down all the way to the elementary schools because the amount of time and curriculum and work that they miss and learning, most importantly, that they miss is drastic when they go out for weeks. Um, and speaking as a retired teacher, board members, when you show up for back to school night, you might think it goes unnoticed. The teachers notice and appreciate it more than you can imagine. It, what it does for morale, it's just, we love it when you show up. So I hope you guys can show up. Thank you for all you do, Lisa and everyone else on this board. You know, third, <laughs> a tripled salary is still zero, unfortunately, because boy, do you deserve a lot more than that. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else would like to speak? Yes? Hi, Chris Resnick, C-H-R-I-S, R-E-S, N-I-C-K, Kendall Park. Um, at last month's meeting, David Carroll from the League of Women Voters in Princeton had advised the board that they will be hosting a forum for Board of Ed candidates um, so that the community can get to know all of you incumbents and the new uh, candidates. So last night I followed up with them and I just wanted to share the information that I was able to obtain. Um, the forum will be held here in the auditorium of Crossroads North on October 11th of this year from 7 to 8.30 p.m. All residents of South Brunswick and only South Brunswick are invited to attend. All nine candidates running for the board have been invited to participate. Uh, however, to date, only four have accepted, and they are hopeful that the remaining candidates will choose to participate. They have until September 20th, uh, noon, to notify the League of Women Voters if they'll be participating. Residents who wish to submit a question can do so by emailing um, it's lwvprinceton at gmail.com and the subject line should say South Brunswick Board of Ed Forum question. Uh, the questions will not be shared with the candidates in advance 
And if time is, is available, questions will be taken from the uh, audience the evening of the forum. So I just wanted to, because every year for the last, I don't know how many years, I've been running a candidate's night for South Brunswick Cares About Schools. And um, this year I just couldn't do it. And I turned to them and asked for their help. And they just took it right off my hands. I didn't have to do another thing. I just sent an email and said, please help. <laughs> and they said, sure. So I hope that all of our uh, candidates will show up for the league. And um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Any other comments before we close? Oh, OK, two more. First name Subarna, S-U-B-A-R-N-A, -A. last name Sani, S-A-H-N-I. I live in Princeton Gate. Um, a quick clarification or a request. Um, there's been a lot going on about CapEx uh, expenditure and, of course, also about the healthcare center. Um, I just want to request Scott and the board members if there could be any clarification. Is there something that you plan to do in future if you can also, you know, enlighten the community as to what is going on and how the, you know, benefits that, because I guess somewhere it, it's missed and it keeps coming back every time. So a little bit of, you know, knowledge sharing would be very helpful in a future board meeting. That's my request. A quick, um, also a clarification to the Education Committee. I heard that, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, there's 12 to 24 percent absences in high school. No. Is the, no? no? That's typically the number of requests that comes in. Okay. When, numbers, not percent. numbers. Not, not percent, the numbers. But that's the uh, request that number comes of, in. Number okay. of students that typically and request. And do we know what the reasons could be for those that get, No. All right. I uh, also want. I'll, I'll clarify. So, Go ahead. Just because they answered, I'm just going to jump in. Repeat your question, please. So I heard that there's 12 to 24 percent absences in high school. That's what I thought I heard, but I just wanted that clarification. Oh, no. that I, did I get it right? She clarified. It's not percentage. It's 12 to 24 requests for extended leave absences at the high school. I have what? no idea what those numbers okay. are. I, we, uh, now, we, we, please, we, please, we, it's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just forward that question yeah, to the I'm just going to say that. To yes, I will exactly. forward that question because I was at the back. Maybe I got it wrong. That's why. That's I, okay. I, yeah, thank you so much. But mm -hmm. I want to appreciate each one of you, Madam President, um, Scott, for all the work that you've been doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for your comments. Next. Hi, my name is Srini, uh, Srini Andropu, uh, which has recorded Southridge community. First of all, I want to thank you for all who is doing great work for the community. At the same time, you know, this is regarding the first on the community uh, courtesy bus service. You know, yes, you want to take hard decisions sometimes. It's well taken. At the same time, what you course you, you proceeded with, we have concerns. And you should have worked with the community because, you know, my kid has to pass the road while it is 35 miles per hour. People are going 45 miles per hour. And they have to, that is number one, safety concern. Number two, I, want, I would like to request you to approach it logically, keeping the core safety and well-being of the kid, how they can walk 45 minutes one way. And I do acknowledge some of the comments for the other people. Yeah, as a parent, you have responsibility. Yeah, I agree. That's why we choose South Brunswick as a better community. So that's why we choose South Brunswick, number one. Number two, we continuously bearing the responsibility, dropping our kids whenever it is possible. Also, I want to remind other members that we also need to have bread and butter. Every one of you has a job, and it's not always possible for you to drop your kids. And you know you can throw a lot of ideas, but what I suggest is work with the community before you make the, any changes and you know, proceed with the you know, collaboration. Again, don't pass on disrespectful comments what pe other people are going. Rather, raise above 
and make sure that you work for the community with courtesy as well as safety and well-being of the kids as well as the community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Nehal Tandel, N-E-H-A-L, T-A-N-D-E-L, and I'm in Dean's Pond. So, uh, same topic about my kid is, pro is going to kindergarten, probably he's the youngest kid in the class. He was born on 31st October. So, this lady is told that there are a million ways to do. I think there is only one way. I have to drop my kids and pick my kids from the school. One of the options Mr. Feder suggested in the email that we have a champions. Champions is $138 per week. So it's $544 per four weeks. If you count monthly, it's a little bit more. Right? If you, if you go before and after both the school. So it's like I'm paying taxes, my bus is gone, I have to put my kids with champions. He's missing the whole fun of going to school bus from for six years. So walking, if you count, is 40 minutes walk from my school to the, even if, if I count the shortcut, right? 40 minutes walk, I have to walk with him because that's uh, principals has to, I mean, I, I cannot even send him alone, right? Even he doesn't even walk. So 40 minutes walk in the morning, 40 minutes walk in the afternoon, in the, and I, I'm working, my wife is working. How is it even possible? So I have to spend $544 every month extra because of the school bus cut. I'm paying a lot of taxes. I do not have any ulterior motive or anything. I cannot even vote, I am not citizen, right? I am not fighting for board, I cannot, I mean, I support them, everybody, but this is pretty bad. It was not done properly and you have to find out some other options to cut somewhere. And I'm a little bit worried, four million cuts coming. This is what he's saying, seven million more coming. I don't know how you are going to, what did you start planning? The board has to start planning. What is going to happen, right? So I don't know, I don't see those plan in the agenda, right? So I just want to make sure this bus, bus is restored and be transparent send, and add those items to the agenda next time, please. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Oh, yes, go ahead. Um, so my name is Sahasra, S-A-H-A-S-R-A. -S I'm from Dayton. I know like I go to middle school, I walk from my house here 30 minutes. Um, we have the crosswalk, we have everything. It's easy, but what I don't like is I come into school, I sit down and I'm sitting with eighth graders learning a curriculum that is not for me. I'm learning a curriculum that is a year above me and half my classes I'm so confused and I'm learning about chemicals when I'm supposed to be learning about space. And it's very confusing for me. On top of that, when we're learning our instrument, it's freezing cold. All of us are wearing our jackets, we're freezing. And in gym, we are halfly running around and it's like a mess. And I was just wondering if you guys could do something about it because like, I know I'm really young and this is my first time coming here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your comment. I'm just gonna ask, hello. You don't have to come back up, but if you could send an email to us, and then that, that's worked very well for students that have come up before, so that would be helpful, okay? You can send it to me if you like, or to your principal, or to Dr. Mammon, or to Mrs. Luckborn, okay? Thanks for coming. And for your first time, you did a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? No, I wanna make sure. Very good, we will be closing this portion of public comments. Thank you for all your comments, everyone. Lisa, if you wanna, I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'll say a couple things. Oh, sure. 
Mr. Petter. So, um, uh, Saberna, is that correct? So if you go to the website and you look at the budget presentations, I did an extremely thorough presentation on the health center. So um, when, you, when you did make that statement that people aren't, they haven't been getting it, it's a choice at this point to not get it. It's not a, I don't get it, it's I'm choosing to not listen to what you're saying. It's okay to disagree, but to say we haven't shared or we haven't been transparent or you don't know, that just means you didn't look or you didn't come to a meeting or you didn't do anything of any kind to try and learn or when it was shared, the people who are saying that are choosing not to listen. And that happens, right? That happens, but um, that's out there on the website. It's clean, it's clear, it's thorough, it's got, I would encourage anyone who watches it to then ask questions, right? To say we don't know is a odd thing when, I don't know how many times we sat up here and talked about it. But um, still, if they have watched it and they have questions, the best thing to do is ask. Um, not just say I don't know or make a claim about CapEx. Because I believe CapEx, using capital expenditures to reduce other costs, wow. That's a great idea because that's what the district has done. $27 million on ESIP, $2.5 million on the health center. Not $15 million, as people in this particular audience have said out loud, um, but $2.5 million with an annual expense that is being covered by the de decrease of claims. But again, you can watch all that and see all that. But using capital expenditures is the district, one of the district's things they've been doing. Um, we've also been told, actually, by um, a member who's a, a, a very um, uh, says he's very good at budgeting. That what we should do is, um, I'll read the I'll read the exact quote. Let's look at all the expenses and see what is state mandated and is not. Then we can do less of what we are doing that is not state mandated. Interesting that that is the explanation that we should do to not do what has happened. But right now, 90% of courtesy busing is still existing. That doesn't make anyone in this room happy. I understand that. But 90% of courtesy busing still exists. That's over 2,000 students. So if you look at reading this again, let's look at all the expenses. I'm just reading from Mr. Bott's email. Let's look at all the expenses and see what is state mandated and what is not. Courtesy busing is not state mandated. So I agree, we should look at things that are not state mandated. We do. That, I showed that the other day, three pages of things that we could do. And I get, I, and I know any one of those is bad, including this courtesy busing one. And then do less of it. We did as little as we could. You know, we, we tried. And I know it doesn't help anyone in here, and I get that, and I feel bad about that. So the idea of doing those two things are kind of, you know, how we've been operating. The budget suggestion to talk about, um, um, sorry, I think budget planning in advance, knowing it's coming. So as you, I think, I don't know if you're in the room yet, but we did talk about that we're gonna be doing a budget presentation in October. So fortunately, the, the planning's been happening for years. Uh, the idea of the vast amount of money, um, again, it, it maybe, it, I don't know if, if you've seen it, but if you look on the budget presentations, we've been addressing this, in fact, four years ago, four years ago. Not last year, not last month, four years ago, I did a presentation. And in that presentation, I specifically spoke, specifically spoke, that this school year, this is four years ago, the 23-24 school year, is the year that we were gonna be in a lot of trouble financially. That was four years ago, we saw this coming. So the idea of planning, I just wanna let, I just wanna let you know we do, but it's still hard to manage $9 million in loss. That, that's a lot of money to manage. Um, uh, so I, I just wanted to share those things that, that those things are happening. As far as the attendance, nothing to do with 12 and 24. Don't know what that even is, but there's, that's just, that's not a, if it's a, just a miscommunication of some sort, I'll take, take blame for that. But if you ask me that question, not, not right now, if you ask me the question, send an email, I'll answer it and I'll make sure that I give that over to the education chair so that they can repeat that out at the next board meeting as well. Okay, so I just wanted to be able to uh, make a couple of comments on mm -hmm. that, thank you. Anything else? Nope. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, um, 
We are, be, we are going to be moving into an executive session, so be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Township of South Brunswick hereby moves into an executive session in accordance with the Sunshine Law, Chapter 231, of the Public Laws of 1975, NJSA 10, 4 through 6, through 10, 4 through 21, to discuss the following CSA evaluation. Be it further resolved that discussion conducted in executive session can be disclosed to the public at such, excuse me, at such time as the matters have been resolved. Formal action may be taken at any meeting. May I have a motion and a second to move into executive session? So Mr. Mitchell, second. Mr. Raj. Excuse me, Mr. Raj. <laughs> I meant to say Dr. Raj, or Sister Krishna. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Um, may I also have a motion and second to adjourn? No. No, I always do that. Why do I always do that? Sorry. We adjourn in executive session. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, South Brunswick. Thank you for coming and have a nice evening.